Stephen, I think that really begs the question, how is trust doing in the uh, crypto space going into 2023? I mean, you're talking about bankruptcies. We've seen the FTX fallout. I mean, SBF was compared to Bernie Madoff of the crypto space. So is trust faltering into the new year? It certainly is. Uh, and it's an easy analogy to make, make like Sam Beckman fried to, to Bernie Madoff. Uh, I've asked that exact question to to, to, to Sam. Like, how, how do you feel about being crypto's version of Bernie Madoff? And he kind of bristles at it because the first thing he'll say is that unlike Bernie Madoff, where his business for decades seems to have just been completely made up, Sam had a real business. And his argument is that he ran it poorly, but FTX was, was a real business. Uh, but but getting back to crypto, I mean, trust is has, has to be at a. I don't know if I'd say an all time low because you need real data to support that. But but trust it's obviously been severely shaken. It was always kind of climbing an uphill battle because just the nature of crypto is hard for people to grasp. One question I still get over and over again is what is the intrinsic value of of Bitcoin because uh, it's not backed by anything um, to most people it's just a, a line of indecipherable like alpha and numerical figures and uh, as, even though I still think a, a lot of Americans think that the US dollar is backed by gold at least they get that it's official fiat currency issued by um, by the government and so like why is Bitcoin worth anything why are all these other tokens worth anything especially when um, usage on the platforms perhaps isn't commensurate with the, the very large market caps that they have and um, and so now with all this plus the collapses, it leads to a lot of important questions. One argument that people say, or one argument that I hear from industry insiders though, is that maybe this is good for crypto because all of these collapses had absolutely nothing to do with crypto's core tenets of like decentralization, privacy, security. It was all more or less like centralized trading and leverage. So sort of like importing some of the worst practices from traditional finance into crypto. And, uh, and I would imagine a lot of, people, a lot of crypto insiders and, and holders of these tokens were thrilled to all of a sudden become millionaires and, and, and billionaires with all this. But then uh, obviously financial speculation has been going on for, for centuries. And when the froth kind of dissipates and, and reality sets back in, everything comes back down. So uh, the argument that you'll hear a lot is that these were not issues with crypto, but this was the, like imported cancers from the traditional financial world. And, and maybe one real question is whether or not there is an opportunity to build crypto and, and and continue to build it in subsequent years without bringing in these certain elements of centralization that that seem to be problematic from from time to time. Like one big push and pull is just like, is it possible to be decentralized and innovative? And and it, and there's a reason why we have corporate structures. There's reasons why we have companies in the world and 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 and, and organizational charts and flowcharts because that's one way to be an efficient organization.